Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Uh, welcome to another video. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to, we, we've done the um, these cabochons and the, the bale we did on this is a, a herringbone bale with some super duos. So I made another one. Um, I did this black one where I used actually four millimeter bicones. So it's a little different around the sides and I made a different bale on it and I got a few, some requests to um, to make the bale and to, to show you how to do this this edging. So it's my pleasure to do that. So these these two I think I can move out of the way for now. Um, I've This is how I'm going to, I'm going to use a, a turquoise piece and um, I'm going to do some purple icons around it and then I'm going to show you how to get to, you know, how you can get to center and um, put this little bale on which is really pretty easy. I pulled out, um, you know, a couple of bracelets because, you know, I you know, it's amazing what I have, you know, what I've made or, you know, that would go, will go with, um, you know, these pendants. So uh, this is just, this is paired in square stitch. And I think that's a great match with this pendant. And this is actually hematite heaven. It's just made with big old, big old six o sorry, six o seed beads. And that goes as well. So look, you know, nice combinations. You know, so it's amazing what you have and, and or what you can make. Um, and that will go with this. And these are just six OC beads too. This was my first video. So, um, you know, even that would go. So anyway, just thought, you know, I'd like to give you a little, you know, heads up on what would go with what. So I want you to get to this point um, before we start. So I've gotten my um, my cabochon. It's a 25 by 18. It's the same size cabochon um, that we've done on the others. Here, I'll just pop them out so you see they're all the same. And we've gotten to the point where we put the, I've gotten to the point where I've put the ultra suede on the back. So that means I've glued it down to lacy stiff stuff. I've put on the one row of base, the base row of beads, which is for me is this um, matte metallic bronze bead. I did the bezel row, which is the little 15-0 um, dark gold or bron um, metallic bronze. And then I did a little, um, and then I did that um, other that, that next row. So it's three rows. This is eleven o. These are eleven o's as well. And they're um, this is a Toho. And I let me just see if I have the name up with me right here. I'll, I'll grab. I'll get the name for. It. I've used this before. It's a, a turquoise um, marble turquoise bead, and it's by Toho. If you wanted to use this, I'll put it in the um, materials list. Um, and so then you know I w after I've sewn all this on. Um, I glued my uh, my backing on. So this is the part, this is where I want you to get um, to get up to, because we've done this already. You can do this from the other video. I, we don't need to do that whole thing. But we will start doing this. So um, I'm going to tell you what you're going to need, and then you can gather up your materials, and we'll um, get started on doing the um, the last row, and then doing the bale, um, this bale with it. Okay. So you're going to need some 4-millimeter um, bicones right there. Okay, and I'm using, um, because I'm, I like purple and turquoise together, I'm using uh, purple velvet. I did some 8 seed beads. I'm using, sort of, I'm using a turquoise. Um, it's a little greener than my turquoise, but um, I tried to pick out, this was a mix, and I tried to pick out the ones that are blue. I'm trying to use what I have without having to order anything right now. And then you need some 11 seed beads. So you need a 4 millimeter bicone, you need an 8 seed bead, and you need a, an 11 seed seed bead. Okay, you need a size 12 beading needle. Um, you need some fire line. You know, you need, you first you're going you're gonna to need enough to go around, around, and then enough to make the bale. So you probably, you know, first, you know, we'll do the bale separately so that, you know, you can, if the bale, you know, something happens to the bale, your piece is still intact. So um, gather up your goodies, and uh, we'll get started making the outside of this pendant. Okay, see you in a few. Okay, so we're back. Um, now, I want to show you um, how to find center on your pendant so that when you hang your pendant it's it's going to sit nicely. Now um, you've already, a lot of you have already posted uh, pendants and so you seem to be pretty you know know what you're doing there <laughs> but uh, I the book um, Beating with Capuchons was very helpful to me um, with that so I'm just going to give you a little heads up on on how they do it in the book and it, it works pretty well. So we've got the cabochon and it's all you know it's to this point that I've told you to get to. And what would be best here would be a piece of tracing paper, but I don't have to have a piece of tracing paper. Um, so just take your, 
just take a piece of paper, as I said, tracing paper would be better, and put it on a flat surface, and put your cabochon on, and then just draw around with a pen, and then, you know, maybe a dark pen, so that you can, you'll be able to see it. Okay, so there, so I've got my cabochon, um, I've drawn it in, and I just did it on top of a booklet because the bead mat is soft. So what you what, what they do in the book is they fold over not the paper, but they fold the paper over. But you're trying to have each end of the oval meet each other. Now it's going to be hard for you. To, you see it through there. So I'm looking for the other side, and um, if you play with it a little bit, you're not going to be able to see it um, while I'm doing it. But as you play with it, I can see it right now, and Clearly, it's um, the way I, you know, I drew it wasn't straight. So don't worry about, don't fold the paper over evenly. Just fold your, your, um, the ends of your cabochon to the other end, like that, okay? And that, you know, that is um, one side. And then do it on the other side. And just make sure that you're looking through. That's why tracing paper would be good. Um, that you're really looking through and making those ends meet. And it's kind of hard unless you have a really good tracing paper. So here, I've, I'm pretty close. And then, what you can do is, where your folds are, take a, um, a ruler, and that's the one thing I forgot to pull out. Here we go. Um, take a ruler, and just mark your, um, your lines, you know, the, the folds. So, just, I'm just going to do it lightly with, um, my pen. I don't want to poke through my bead mat. Okay, so there, and I'm going across. Okay, and it's you know it, you know how accurate this is. Um, I don't know, but it's it's close enough so that it gives you a nice center. I'm sure there are many other ways to find center. So then I'm going to put my capuchon on top. You know where I've drawn around, and I want to make sure that I have it. I think it was the other way. I just want to make sure that it's sort of in there. So that's going to kind of give me a center right here, because you want you want your um, when you start beading you want you want to put this grouping the the grouping that we're going to use um, to do the outside of the of this cabochon is we're going to use an eight o an eleven o a four millimeter bicone an eleven o and an eight o so this is the this is our sequence right there. So I want to get that 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 um, bicone. I want to try to get that in the center because this is my sequence, and then everything else after that will you know it, we can work with. Okay. So um, when I did this one, I I my cabochon my um, bicone sort of ended up in the middle um, a, a middle bead here, and then I had two beads on either side, so I had a five a little five bead. Uh, center here with the um, the point of the bicone right on in the middle and then I started two beads over this way. Okay, now I know that sounded confusing, but it really isn't. So um, on this one I'm just going to, so what you want to do is you just want to, you can count, you know, your beads. My center is coming sort of right through, um, through the middle here. Let me, I'm going to pull in tight so you can see that. It's, Okay, I'm not staying this tight, but I'll pull in tight. So it's sort of, it's sort of right here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back about two and a half beads, um, and start my sequence there. Now, you know, like I said, it's a, um, it's sort of approximate. I, you know, I don't think it's, you know, it's. I think you can find your center pretty easy. Um, you can count beads, but we're not counting them when we put them on. So I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna start. I'm just going to put my my needle right through, you know, about two and a half beads back from where my center mark is, okay? And I'm going to pull that off, all right? So what you can do with this, you know, I haven't put any beads on yet. What you can do with this, I'm just, I just like to sort of hold my, my thumbnail there. You, the, in the book, it says to, um, you know, you can put a little, um, right at center you can put a little um, you know a little thread you know or a, a needle you know and then put some thread around it so it's it's always there so I just have my little you know here's my center bead I'm gonna go back about to there and I'm going to take 
an 8 0. And I'm going to remember how we do the outside. We come through the top. Okay, so I've got my 8 0. I'm coming through the top. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail. So we're doing the outside now. Remember how this sits on the outside like that. All right, and then I'm just going to come up that bead, and this is always a little, the part where you have to hold it a little bit. Okay, so this is what it looks like, and then you're just going to pull it down. I'm just going to put my needle down for a second. I'm going to pull it there, and you know, you have a little bit to work with. I don't want to get too close because I, sometimes this camera pulls in very close and it, I don't even notice it. So I know that my middle bead is right here. I just eyeballed it, I know that. So I'm back about two beads. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an 11 0, a 4 millimeter bicone, an 11 0. Okay, this is my sequence, and then an 8 0. I'm going to count over. So here's my center 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to count over to the fifth bead here. And I'm just going to go in between those two beads. It's, you know, to me it's not super exact, but we can, you can kind of play with the beads a little bit and move them around a little bit, um, especially this, the, you know, this first group. So remember, you want to come back up the, the 8 that you put on, okay? So here we are. Here's our first grouping, all right? My, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to put it on my paper and kind of see if my and that looks pretty good to me. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of happy with that. So, you know, that's one way of doing it. There are so many ways to find center um, that are maybe more exact, but this one's working pretty well. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an 11 a bicone, an 11 and an 8 Remember, that's our sequence. And I'm going to count over four beads, and I'm going to put it, like, right at the end of where four beads is, so it takes up that last bead takes up the fifth bead. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, use, to, to space them five beads apart. Um, they may not be perfect, but um, so far they've been coming out pretty good. So then you have to go up that 8 -oh. And, you know, also, you know, no, no two beads are alike. So, um, you know, they're going to take a little bit more space. Um, some may take a little more space, some may take a little less space. So here we go with that. And also, actually, um, I think with cabochons, and, you know, I'm not going to keep going over how that I'm not an expert. I'm getting there. <laughs> um, I think it's really good that, beads, that, that some beads are not the same size, because you can, that way you can fit beads um, in where you wouldn't normally be able to fit them in. So, you know, so when you're going around, if you see, oh gee, I need, I have space for one more bead, um, you can use a skinny one to fit. So, you know, it can be helpful. Okay, so here I am. Here's my sequence. I'm going to count one, two, three, four. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm just going to pop through. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do all the way around. And I'm going to come up through here. And then I want to, you want to just look at it and make sure, and you know, you can actually play with it a little bit. So there you go. So keep going all the way around until you come to the end, and then we'll, um, we'll put the bail on. All right, I'll see you in a few. Okay, we're back for a minute because I want to show you how to put, um, even though we did this on the other video, I'll do it again on this, how to put the last beads on. So we've come, you know, to this point. Um, so all I need here is a, um, an 11 a bicone and 11 So I'm coming out of the top of this 8 -o. I'm just going to go down the top of this 8 on the other side, pick up a piece of the backing. Do that again. Try to get both the backing and the ultra suede, like that. About a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to pull that through, like that, and see how that puts that um, piece on. So then I'm going to put that, um, my needle in the mat, and I should have put another needle on this. Or take your needle off, or take another needle, and take your tail, you know, that you had coming out of the front, 
and um, I'm going to have to borrow. Well, let me just grab a needle over here. Sorry, I'm coming. <laughs> okay, here I am. Um, my needles are a little bent, but that's, you know, that's a size 12 needle for you. Okay, so I'm just going to thread this needle. Come on, you. Okay, there we go. All right. And this is the tail, you know, that that was coming up from the front. So here we've put this, this is the bead we put on, so I'm pulling that there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the seed bead by cone seed bead. Okay, and then down, down through that 8 -0. Pick up a piece of the backing and the, um, the ultra suede, like so. Come in a little bit much, but that's okay. I bent my needle, and I'm going to pull that through. So you've kind of crisscrossed, right? You've come through one side, and then the other side, and look how nicely that it seats it. So um, one thing you can do here is, and this is a really good thing to learn, is um, I'm going to take my needle off the short piece. Um, sometimes you don't end up right in the same place with a thread. So there's something called a running stitch. And that all you do is come through the backing and come right through your beads. See? Like that. With my crooked needle. And then I'm going to come down again, right through the beads. I'm just going to kind of go like so. Just coming down. It's amazing what you can do with these little guys. And now your threads are close to each other. And now, and that's very, um, a very common uh, thing to do while you're when you're um, beating cabochons and making all kinds of, um, you know, all kinds of doing all kinds of cabochon work. And you know, you have to go from one place to the next. You do a running stitch. So I'm just going to tie these just like we did with the other cabochons. Okay, like so and then I'll burn off the threads. I've got my center right there, look, looking pretty good to me, all right? And then, um, so go ahead and do that, tie everything off, and then we'll make the, um, we'll make this bale to go with it, okay? So thread another, um, uh, thread a needle with um, more thread. Don't use the thread you're using. We're gonna do the bale separate. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've got some 11 O's, and these are the Toho, um, marbled opaque turquoise blue, and I've got some 15 O's, and if I forgot to mention that, um, you need some 15 O's. <laughs> okay, so I always check the materials down there. All right, so here's my piece, and I've been playing with it quite a bit um, to get a good bail on it for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this one, and it's it doesn't have the super duos, it's sort of a V, and it's still a herringbone, but then I've embellished it with this little, these 15 O's around the edge. You don't have to do that, but it, it's kind of pretty. All right, so you really sort of have to start on the back, or you do should start on the back, actually. So bring your needle through. You can use these, these um, our sequence. So that's an 8-0, an 11-0, the crystal, the 11-0, and the 8-0. Come up, one side or the other, the 8-0. Grab a little backing, like that. Pull it through. Okay, I'm going to pull that through. Leave a tail, a little tail. Then I'm going to add six of your turquoise beads. Three, four, five, six. Okay, and you just want to hop over to that other 8-0 on the other side. Pull through. So one 8-0 to the other. You've got in between, you've got the two 11 O's and the Four millimeters. So I'll put it on. I'll turn it around. Um, let me just grab a hold of the thread so that you can see what it looks like. So it's loose right now, but that's how it looks. Okay. All right. So we have to go back to the back again. So here we are. We're on the back. Here's your tail. I don't have to pull the, you don't have to tie the tail in yet. We're going to play. We're going to pull a little bit and play with the tail. So remember when I was saying what's the you know sometimes if you have a thread over here or here, um, you know what do you do? You just do running stitch. So you're actually going to go through your right through your um, beads, 
you know, the backing and the beads to the front. Stitch, okay, then come through again in about eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch um, increments. Okay, we're working our way over, and this is running stitch, which is, you know, it's genius. And if I just read a little more in the book, I would have seen that. <laughs> so I did. See, everybody's learning. Nobody knows everything. At least of all me. Okay, so I'm going through again. So here, I've got my running stitch through, and as I've come back to the to this side of the of the bale. All right, so let me, there's my tail. I'm going to come up the 8-0, and I'm going to pull that through. I get a little caught there, so let me get my tail out. There you go. All right, got that. I'll pull in a little bit just for this part, okay. Then I want you to go up two of your, of the 11 O's. Skip two, come down the other two, okay, and the 8 0 on the other side, and a, and a bit of the backing, okay, and then pull. I'm going to show you how it looks in the front right now, okay, so here we go. Turn it around, and that's how it looks. So now we want to travel again, so come on through. You want to get back to this 80. So I'm going to push my needle through and I'm just going to I'm going to uh, do a little running stitch again along the front and the back, making sure I'm not pulling any, you know, beads to, you know, um, out or getting thread over the beads. Okay? And then come back through right under that that 8 -0. Okay, so here we go, going through the 8 -0. All right, and then come on up through the 8 -0. And this is what you have. Okay, now for some reason, um, my size 12 beading needles, this particular um, group is very soft and I don't know if, so, if you know, maybe sometimes they're softer than others, but these are bending a lot. So I'm coming out of the 8 on one side, see? So that's looking pretty good and we still haven't tied in our other end. So let me pull out just a touch and um, what we're going to do is we're going to go up three beads and we can even turn it on this side if you like by now. and. If you're doing the little embellishment, the little 15-0, pick up a 15-0. And I have like a little trick here, which I don't know if it's a trick, but it's just something I figured while I was, <laughs> while I was doing this. Come down the other side, like you're doing herringbone, and instead of going up in the front, I'm going up the, uh, the, su the bead, I'm going through the back. See that? And that's my thread's going to pull back there. Okay, so I've ma I've made the thread pull across in the back. Now, when I do the two, you're going to put two eleven O's on. I'm going to, and we'll see if this if this really works. I'm going to put the two eleven O's on. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch up in the front when I put the eleven O's on, and it I think it might pop the that little bead out so it stays in place. There you go. All right. So you see it did work actually. <laughs> okay, which is always nice. So take a 15 out, come down the other side of your herringbone, come up the back. I'm just making the loop go in the back with the little with the um, 15 0. See? So I'm making the loop go through the back. And then when I put on, and I'm just kind of giving the, encouraging that to stay in the front a bit. And when I put on the two 11 O's, I'm coming, I'm going to come up the front of the piece. 
Okay, so I'm just going to sort of encourage those to stay in place. That's a little picky work, but it's okay. It, it really, you know, once you get going, it will just get a hold of that. So something just come up like that. All right, so and you're going to come up in the front and make sure that your thread just goes where it's supposed to. And you see how it pulls it together and it pulls the little 15 nose in the back? I'll come in a little bit and I'll do one more and then I'll send you off on your own. So here I'm going to do the um, 15 0 now. So let me grab a 15 0. Okay, so I'm just going to come across and down the blue bead. Okay, and then instead of going across this way, I'm going to go across the back like that. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. All right, so I so my thread is going to go through the back, you see, of that herringbone. I'm just going to give this a little encouragement to go forward, and then I'm going to pick up to 11 O's and go down the front and then up. I'm going to go up the front of the beads. So I think you probably have that now. And that keeps, it keeps everybody in place. Don't ask me why, it just does. There's a reason for that. <laughs> okay, so you see how nicely they go into place? So remember, when you put the little 15-0 on, just make sure you, 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 um, your thread goes in the back. When you're putting the two 11-0s um, on, make sure the thread goes in the front. So go around um, and do about, um, I don't know, 12 or 13 rows until the, whole, the, um, the bale is as, as big as you want it. And then maybe back here and we'll, we'll tack it down. Okay, and then we'll be done. I'd see you in a minute. Okay, so I've got a length of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the bale on, and now we're just going to attach it to the back. Okay, so I'm going to do it pretty much like we did the, um, the, you know, our other herringbone bale. So we're coming out of this bead, and I'll pull in a little for this. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm coming out on this side. I'm just going to go through these two. 11 O's on the back, okay, I'm going to pull, all right, I'm going to go down the 8 O and grab some of the backing, okay, so I've got part of it on right there, and we're traveling again, so come across, with your running stitch. Now yours will be a lot neater than mine um, because I, you know, I practice on these. You know, this is where I, I kind of figure out my, you know, what I'm going to do. So I take it out and I put it back together. Anyway, um, come up the 8 -0 on the other side. Make sure you can see that. It's a little tricky. You've got that other thread there, so just you know, try to pick up a little piece of the backing and come through that 8-0. Okay, pull that through. So we're just going around to get to the other side, so we can tack that other side down. So go through the two 11 O's, and then you want to go up your bale a few beads, like so. And that tacks, see how that tacks your, your, um, the bale on? And then just go across. So wherever you're coming out, bring your thread across. And you're just going to go back down. Make sure you can see this. You know, and we're just going to keep doing that until, until it's nice and strong. Okay, so I would go down these here. Okay, like so. These three. You can even just go up one or two. Okay. All right. There we go. Well, we've got it down two, so we might have to do them one at a time. Whoops. Sorry about that. Okay. Gone through. Just make sure your loop goes in. Go back down the two beads. Just go down those two eleven O's. Okay. And. You know, do that again. Do it a couple of times until the bale feels really strong. Like I did it, I probably did it, you know, um, three times around this one until it felt really strong. And rather than, um, 
I'm thinking rather than uh, travel again, you know, to tie off, maybe I'll just reinforce my my um, my outside row a bit. So I'm sort of doing this as we go. So here, the, here I'm coming down the the eight o, and I'll just travel with you one more time. So we're just going to go through, okay? So it's the running stitch, right? I'm just going to come up through here. Okay, the front looks pretty good. Um, and maybe, all right, maybe we'll just, maybe I'll just tie off at this point. So just go through your, um, your bail a couple of times. I'm not going to do it because I, you know, uh, I just want to get the video up, but I did on this one. I went through several times and I just went through the front and then up again those beads, just like we did. And then just take your, um, I was designing a little bit. I was thinking maybe I had a better way of doing it, but I kind of like the original way. So we're going back to the original way. So, <laughs> okay. So sometimes you get my creative process when um, when I make a video because I'll look at something and I'll say, "Well, that could look better," you know, or "That could I could do that better." But I think um, I think this is fine. I, I kind of like it this way. It um, you know you're, you're tying it like so, and it's and it gets nice and tight once you once you tie it. And um, I would could have gone. I would have done this one more time. Um, or maybe twice more, but you know these. You know it's funny. Um, sometimes you know I get uh, messages or or um, uh, comments about um, that I have so much jewelry. You know because I make so many things. I've got so many like eighty vid what eighty five videos up there. Uh, probably seventy of them are are tutorials on you know actual jewelry pieces, and some are you know how tos of course. But I don't all the I don't have all those pieces. What I do is I just use them. Um, and then I take them apart, or I, I keep using them. Like with this one, I've used it. I've used actually two um, ex two of these to get to where I am on this. And um, I would remake if I was going to use this for myself. I would remake it and make it beautiful in the back. And yours will come out beautiful. It's just through my all my um, my practice um, or my my tr you know my designing. Um, you know. It comes out. It will come out nice. So I really don't have all that much of jewelry. I have a few pieces that I made that I keep, but most of it is is more like um, as it doesn't look that great because I'm I'm designing as I go. All right. So just uh, just a little aside there. Okay. So here you go. Here's your bail. Um, let's see. Do we have? See, and this was the other one that I was working on. So you know they, I have pieces all over the place. Um, that are partially made and such. So I don't. I I can't find the um, the little. Um, necklace that I made, but um, you could even, what if you even did some of like a double strand thing on this? Like just do strands. You see, I'm always thinking, 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 thinking. You never know what would look nice. So there it is. There's your little bail with the um, with the embellishment without the super duos. Here's your, um, here it is on a chain. Here's the other one. So here we go. We've got lots of, um, we've got a couple of ba different bail options. Um, there are some beautiful, um, pieces posted on Facebook, and uh, I think that, you know, this is a simple one, but you can just go nuts with this. I mean, you could make it huge if you want. I kind of like seeing a lot of the stone showing. Um, you can do a little peyote on the inside, but I, I mean, I'm loving this sort of, um, this backstitch to where it just sort of um, frames the piece. You can hang, hang drops, do fringe, um, you know, there's just all kinds of um, really great things. I'm giving you the basics here, but there are all kinds of really kinds of great things and great um, creative um, uh, pieces you can make just by um, learning how to do this, the basic, um, the basic uh, beading around a cabochon. Now, I am working on a ring, so I'm going to use a smaller piece uh, for the ring, and it's, you know, it, it, I'll, you know, when I make it, I'll post it on Facebook. Um, I'll probably make it, I'm probably going to make it black but I you know for the for um, demonstration purposes I'll make it in a lighter color so I, ha I have some really pretty stones and all different colors that are um, smaller and I think it would make a very cool ring all right so there you have it there's the there's the um, here we'll put the other one out um, oh and here's our little I know I never get off I, you know this is um, <laughs> uh, here's our little chain that we made so all the pieces are are together and I'll just um, I'll just put it on here just so we can show everything nicely. Okay, so come on you.
Make sure when you make your bail that that your um, that your um, necklace is going to fit. That your your um, what you call it? Your clasp is going to fit through, and that did fit through actually. Um, you can also this is a big one. You could get make a smaller one. Um, so anyway, here's sort of our little grouping that we have here, and I hope that um, you like the bail. I hope you make it. Hope you keep posting on Facebook. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm, lo I'm also looking. In, I'm going to make some earrings, and probably the ring will be next. But I'm going to make some earrings and some other fun stuff. So um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.